Welcome my friend to video two of five things that stand in the way of you becoming a great parent master series. So in the previous lesson, we spoke about how to get hurdle number one, which is all about accepting that your child is not a mini you. And now we're going to look at hurdle number two, which is understanding that your own parenting style is unique and may evolve to be something completely different from that of your parents and your friends. So this lesson builds upon the previous one and that involves you and your expectations about parenting. Just like your child is not a mini you, you are not a carbon copy of your parents either. So let me start by asking you a question about, you know, growing up. When you were growing up, what did you actually think about your parents' parenting style? Did you actually like the way they raised you, you know, or did you wish that things were different? So I'm going to start by sharing a story from my own experience, my you know childhood. When I was growing up, so I'm the eldest of three girls, and my parents were actually quite strict with me because I was the eldest child. But then this strategy dramatically changed, you know, with my younger sisters, you know, who suddenly were allowed, you know, to do so much more, and they were given so much more freedom. And back then, it you know really used to infuriate me that my younger sister could you know do things at 13 that I wasn't even allowed to do at age 16. And I remember thinking when I grew up, if anything, I would be fair and consistent as a parent. The scary thing is, however, even if you vowed to be completely different, you know, when you become a parent yourself, you sometimes catch yourself, to, you know, demonstrating some of your parents' old parenting methods. You find them creeping into your daily behavior and into your own expectations. So even though I made sure to be fair as a mum and consistent, that's something that I really pride myself on. I still would catch myself feeling annoyed if my kids, you know, stayed up past 8.30 because if you remember that story from the other lesson, that was a bedtime that was set for me by my own parents. I also had this expectation that, you know, kids should do as they were told without complaining or questioning things because that's what I was, you know, taught to do. Even though as a child, I felt like it really sacrificed my chance to share my voice and opinions. But now I want to fast forward to today and forget about the past for a second. And I want you to know that when it comes to your own current family, you get to set new rules that work for you. Just because your parents did things in you know, a particular way doesn't mean that you need to do the same. You absolutely do not need to repeat the past, especially if you're not fond of particular parts of that parenting method. You know, In order for things to change, you need to change. So this parenting hurdle is all about questioning your parenting style and seeing, you know, is it working for you and what can you do differently if you need to? So I want to ask you, you know, just think about this question for a second. Does your parenting style, whatever that may be, support the sort of children that you are wanting to raise today? So some more questions to think about, you know, are your expectations your own or are you simply repeating the parenting style and mistakes of your parents? because they're so deeply ingrained in you and you've never stopped to question them. What if you were willing to do something radically different from what you already know? You know, how would that look for you? And what is stopping you from having profound, you know, conversations with your kids about your parenting style? You know, what's working for them, what's not? And maybe they're conversations that your parents never had with you, but what's, you know, stopping you from doing things differently? So hopefully you can see, and I just want to plant that seed, that if you know, it changes to happen in your parenting style, that you are actually going to need to take action yourself. We need to remember that we're not our parents, so we don't need to repeat their mistakes. Um, and our children are not us, so we need to grant them the grace and love and acceptance and understanding to support them on their own different journey in life. We're going to need to find our own parenting style that suits you and your kids. And when I mention the fact that it's not just looking at the way pa our parents did things and doing things differently, it's also making sure that you're not constantly looking to see what your friends, you know, and other family members might be doing now and thinking that you have to do it that way too. You don't. It's all about working out what is working for you. And if something is currently working, you know, that is fantastic. But if your current parenting style, you know, isn't working for you, you need to work out, well, what do you need to do different in order to improve it? When do your kids become deserving of a parenting style that suits their personalities most? Is it now? Is it never? Is it in five years' time that you're going to decide to change things up? I also want you to think about a few more questions. So just really give it some thought. You know, does your parenting style include trying to control your kids or guiding them to flourish? 
Do you speak to your children on a regular basis as though they're destined for success or do you like try to put them down? Not intentionally, but a lot of what we do is not intentional. I really believe that most of us have the best intentions to, you know, be a great parent. parent. That's the goal of most of us. But some of us sometimes just need more intention and just the awareness that we can do things in a different way. You know, do you realize that, you know, you're responsible for your parent, you know, your kids' safety and well-being? And we do that by giving them lots of love, support and security. But we're not responsible for all their actions. So there are just some things to think about, you know, when it comes to raising our kids. What are our parenting goals? And is our parenting style in alignment with these goals? You know, in five years time from now, what will you have wished you had done differently? If it's not working, we need to do something different. So how do you get over this hurdle? So if you've got a, you know, a parenting style that you might have inherited from your parents or you do it because you don't know any different, what can you do to jump over this hurdle? Because it's a really big hurdle to get over sooner rather than later is normally best and your kids will be so grateful. Well, here is what you need to know. You need to know that you are not your parents. You have the choice and the freedom to develop your own parenting style to suit you and your family and not just repeat old habits. Remember, we're adults. We've got the power to do things differently if we would like, if that's what we wish to do. I also want you to answer those questions that I spoke about. They're so important. The biggest question is, you know, what are your parenting goals and is your parenting style in alignment with those goals that you have? Because you really do need to identify and know where you can improve in order to improve. And finally, love your children without expectations or a hidden agenda. Ask them questions, you know, try to understand their needs, try to work out what would suit, you know, what would work best for them in order to thrive. And it doesn't mean not having rules. Of course, rules are there, but it's about setting them so that in a way that works best for you and your children and so that everyone is flourishing. I also recommend being brave enough to admit that you're not perfect, but together knowing that you can work with your kids to build a stronger and healthier relationship. So now that we've tackled that hurdle, let's look at hurdle number three, losing sight of the big picture. Now, just as it's important to work out our own parenting style, I also think it's so important to make sure that we never lose sight of the big picture. This is a hurdle that so many parents stumble upon on a day-to-day basis, especially when we're feeling stressed and tired. We start the day, you know, with the best of intentions with our kids, but after a long day at work or surviving on next to no sleep, or when our kids are just being particularly annoying as some kids are prone to be, we sometimes react in ways that are not in alignment with our big picture goals. Now, once again, this means looking at some important questions. You know, what is your ultimate goal as a parent? What sort of relationship do you want to have with your kids long term? Is your goal to look for, you know, the things that your kids do right or the things that they do wrong? Are the interactions that you're having founded on love and kindness versus, you know, criticism and hostility? Do you praise them often or do you find yourself that, you know, you're more more than often blaming them for things? Now, the thing is, I know that most of you, you know, wish that you could say, okay, of course, I want all my interactions to be founded on love and kindness. I want to be praising them. I want to be supporting them. But the problem is the hurdle, losing sight of the big picture, sometimes gets in the way, really, really does. And that's why it's so important to keep the big picture at hand, our long-term goal when it comes to parenting. Often it's, you know, to raise healthy, independent, compassionate, well-adjusted kids. But we lose sight of that big picture when we take our eyes off the goal. So if you don't have your eyes on that goal, you can even forget it exists. I know, it's scary to think that. But the truth is, it is so much easier to raise strong children than to repair broken men. And why would we break something during the, you know, their most formative years that we might have to fix later? Why not try to build strong children who feel loved right now, right from the start? Because what is it that, you know, what is it in the end that we want our kids to remember about us? What do they What is the message that we want to leave with them? What's the feeling that we want to leave with them? Those are the big picture questions that we often lose sight of. You know, are you too busy to do the things with your kids that they want to do with you? Why is it okay to speak to our kids in ways that we would never speak to other people? They're just, you know, things to think about. And all of us, uh, you know, often fall prey to this losing sight of the big picture. 
But the trick is working out how to keep an eye on the big picture even during times of stress and when we're tired and when we're annoyed and when we really need a break. So I'm going to you know, offer you some suggestions here in order to break, you know, break through this and get over this hurdle. And now number one is definitely you need to incorporate self-care into your everyday life. You really need to get the sleep that you need and take that bath and eat well and exercise. Self-care needs to be a priority. And a lot of people will go, oh, that's so weird. You know, we're talking about our children and now you're suggesting that I do something about myself. Yes, I definitely am because you can't give anything to others from an empty vessel. I also recommend setting a daily reminder on your phone with a simple message. And it can even be a message as simple as the words, don't forget the big picture. Whatever works for you. I have a reminder that pops up on my phone at 8 o'clock and 8 p.m. So 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. every day. Only because I'm someone who sometimes actually does need a physical reminder and that just works for me. You can use your phone. You can, you know, scribble it down in your diary or leave a photo of your kids in your wallet or keep them on the fridge or something that keeps you in alignment with your future goals. I also think that sometimes it's okay to say no. And in fact, I recommend that you say no to others and yes more to your kids because in the end, aren't they the ones who truly matter? Whether we like it or not, parenting is a 365-day job. It's a 24-hour role, and we all signed up for it the moment we had kids. Maybe we didn't realize it was going to be so full-on, but the truth is, even when we're away from our kids, even when we're working, or even as they grow up, we still do influence the spirit by the amount of love and acceptance that we share with them while we're together. So I encourage you to stop making excuses or acting like your behavior might not matter if you're grumpy or you know, using that as an excuse. Just like try to keep in mind your ultimate goal as a parent. Even when you're tired and stressed, you know, fine, you can give yourself grace, but just always remember that you're someone's mum and someone does look for you for support and guidance and love. You are their safe place. So no matter how crazy your days, I really recommend spending at least 15 minutes intentional one-on-one time with each child. Yes, each child. If you need to schedule it, schedule it, but don't leave it out. So the question is, you know, do you have 15 minutes for your children? Do you have 15 minutes in a day to spend with them? This is the time that you can spend connecting with your kids, asking about their day, helping to create loving memories that you might think aren't so important now, but they will mean something in the end because they show that you care about them enough to to make that connection, to be intentional. You're physically there for them when they need you. And the other important point to point out before we end the lesson is making sure it's unconditional love that you are giving them as opposed to love with conditions so unconditional love is you know when you're loved in spite of your faults and to be loved even when you're imperfect because every individual in this world is you know perfectly imperfect it is such a gift when you know that you're being loved even when you're not perfect even when you're making mistakes even when you think that you're disappointing someone to know that you're loved in spite of that all is just such a priceless gift that cannot be understated so now that you have some ideas on what you can do to keep your eyes firmly on the goal on that big picture goal and you also have permission to go ahead and develop your own unique parenting style and i didn't have to give you permission because you always had that option i want you to take this all in and i am so excited about catching you in the last lesson i will see you there Welcome.